So food critic influencer Keith Lee was on a trip through Atlanta this past week. And it's almost like that meme you've seen where like the Grim Reaper is going door to door, taking folks out, except the doors are like Atlanta restaurants. Even though he liked a lot of the places he ate at here, that's pretty much the story coming out of his tour in Atlanta. And I have some thoughts. For those who don't know, Keith Lee is an influencer who has for some years now been roaming the nation going to black owned or at least black oriented restaurants and reviewing their food in his patented deadpan but even killed and positive style. And I want to give him credit in that he is an overtly positive figure as an influencer. It's really easy to get traction on social media by being negative, but even when Lee is not having the best time, he never leans into dragging people or restaurants. And it's somewhat inspiring that he's built such a big platform so on basically helping people out. But unfortunately, his experience in Atlanta has kind of broken that pattern. Lee wasn't able to completely be positive a few times on his Atlanta trip. He hasn't been too happy with the experience he's had in some of Atlanta's most notable black owned restaurants. And this has caused quite a stir. Lee has spoken on how weird it is that he can't call in takeout orders. There's some frustrating rules he's seen about picking up food and ordering and sitting down. And some of the instruction stuff is a little consistent it has put him in a difficult spot that i don't think he's appreciated custom service was interesting while the people were nice the rules they had set were very unique to me we initially tried to do takeout but when we came in they said we couldn't sit out and there was no space at the bar for us to stand so we had to stand outside to order our food and then we decided we just gonna dine in but two people in our party stepped out for a second because again we fresh off the plane so everybody's trying to get situated the waitress again she was nice but she told us she couldn't take any orders or she couldn't do anything until everybody sat out no water no coffee no drink orders Nothing. Now, overall, I don't think Lee's assessment of what he's experienced is unfair, and he's went out of his way to ask his viewers to be cordial towards these businesses. But I do feel like his experience and the response to what he went through is not really getting the full picture. Lee is a food critic, not a culture critic, and he came to Atlanta to judge food and ended up having to make a bit of evaluation on Atlanta's culture without having had a real opportunity to understand it at a deeper level. And without that cultural analysis, a lot of people, especially folks outside of Atlanta, are coming to the wrong conclusion about what the problem really is. And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. But first, a little bit of history. Atlanta has taken to calling itself Wakanda, a reference to the fictional African nation of Wakanda from Black Panther, where in this fantasy world, black people live much better and have significant wealth. I get what's being alluded to with this nickname, which is that being black in Atlanta can feel different than being black in other places, but it does say something about how blackness operates here in a slightly negative way as well, that people are unironically calling Atlanta Wakanda. Need I remind you, Wakanda wasn't all as cracked up to be, you know, video in the description. Unlike Wakanda, Atlanta is the home of black American capitalism. It has one of the highest income disparities in the entire country. And while Atlanta has had a black mayor for over 50 years now straight, these same black mayors have consistently sold out portions of the city to corporate interests, hence creating that wealth disparity, which mostly involves taking money and resources out of poor black neighborhoods. The difference is that unlike other major cities where this same type of stuff is happening, which to be clear is most other major cities, Atlanta has the unique feature of having to cut a whole lot more black people in on the take. What I'm getting at is that Atlanta is one of the few cities, if not maybe the only city in the country with a well-defined and I'd argue historically entrenched black bourgeoisie or elite class. Other cities, of course, have black folks with money, have their share of rich Negroes, but Atlanta is one of the few outside of maybe DC and Chicago where not only are there rich black people, but that wealth is tied to much of the power centers of the city and is able to create an explicit space for itself from other black folks in the city. Further, because Atlanta is much smaller than those large cities, the reach of that black influence seems to be much, much broader. You cannot go anywhere within Atlanta or the metro area without feeling the influence of Atlanta's black wealth. And that's why Atlanta feels different because when I walk down the street in anywhere but Cobb County, I don't feel the same sense of dread that I might if I was back home in my hometown of Chicago. And Atlanta didn't just get like this in the last 20 years of social media dominance and music and stuff like that, this elite class of black folks has existed since the reconstruction days 
after slavery. Atlanta has old black money and folks whose families have been rich and in power for pretty much a century now. All of this is important to understand to really get how the culture of blackness and black excellence in Atlanta tends to feel and move differently here. And in some ways it should be celebrated. Like I don't think the music and art wave that Atlanta has been at the forefront of for the last 30 years would be possible if not for the children of the black bourgeoisie having the opportunity and access and resources to develop this black arts, bohemian trendsetting culture that we love today. And we see that manifested today in what's often referred to as new Atlanta. But this is also where things get a little funny because new Atlantans are a little funny acting. And I say that as a new Atlanta person, I was not born and raised here. In fact, the majority of the people that I interact with my friend circle as a whole is full of transplants that were not born in this city. And this is because Atlanta has been one of the fastest growing cities for a good decade now. And for a lot of reasons, such as black colleges, where the black elites send their children, those aforementioned large corporations that have made homes here and the robust black culture has made Atlanta a destination for moneyed, educated and talented black people really from around the world. Despite what TikTok or black conservative weirdos and the Manosphere and their female counterparts will tell you, black people have always preferred to be around other black people and black folks with money have preferred to be around other black folks with money. And this isn't always easy to do except for in cities like Atlanta. But it also has side effects to maintain this elitist bougie celebrity aesthetic, there's a little bit of anti-blackness, a little bit of classism, and a lot of celebrity culture worship that happens here. These black folks that came here with their money and their expertise and their education and their good jobs, they want restaurants owned by celebrities and high-end eateries that reflect the status of which they've attained. They don't want to just go to normal eateries or holes in the walls or high-end white spaces. They want their own. For example, as I said earlier, I'm originally from Chicago and Chicago has a legendary chain of black owned restaurants called Harold's Chicken Shack. And it's simply just a fried chicken spot where you can get some dope wings and some fries covered in their patented mild sauce. I get some almost every time I go home to Chicago and Harold's are all pretty much just simple holes in the wall and strip malls. They sometimes don't have places to sit down and eat. Maybe there's an OTV or something, but that's pretty much it. And it's quite likely that there's bulletproof glass shielding the counter where you pay for your food. It's only a place to get food and not a place to do anything else. But within Chicago, it is well loved and well supported because it represents something special about the city of Chicago. Well, a few years ago, Atlanta got its own Heralds. This wasn't technically the first Heralds. There was one by Clark's campus that mysteriously burned down for some reason, but we're getting into deep lore. The point is that this new Heralds in Atlanta, Atlanta's Heralds is Heralds Chicken and Ice Bar complete with a full bar, multiple large flat screen TVs. There's a DJ there at night. It has waitresses and only waitresses. It has been elevated from hole in the wall to party atmosphere, dining experience worthy of a night out. And for me, it's kind of odd coming from the holes in the wall I remember in Chicago until you understand that this is what black Atlantans require. And this is what black folks look for when they travel here. And this is where I have to be a little bit critical of Keith Lee, cause in a way, he doesn't seem to understand that he's getting the results of his own work. I know that wasn't his intention, but it is the result of what celebrity does in Atlanta. For someone like Keith Lee, who has went to hole in the wall after hole in the wall, as well as notable black owned staples nationwide, I get why he was frustrated being here. In his recap of his Atlanta experience, he states that he is not interested in being a celebrity and being treated like a celebrity. And that is definitely gonna conflict in a city like Atlanta, where everyone wants to be treated like a celebrity, even when they are clearly not. And the eating experiences are designed to cater to this delusion that if you come to Atlanta and you wear your nice outfit and you take your Instagram pictures and you go to the hot eating spot that you in fact are a celebrity just like Keith Lee. And you see why that, that creates problems because Keith Lee, he's just coming to get good food. But these restaurants he criticized, they aren't popular for good food. They have good food. Don't get me wrong the ones I've went to, but they're popular because they're the places where new Atlanta and tourists come to spend their money and be seen. Just look at the Instagram posts of one of the places that responded to Keith Lee's criticism. You cannot get more fake and bougie than this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Did you see this Keith Lee video about the real milk and honey? And who is this Keith Lee? Daddy. You don't know Keith Lee? Yeah. No. Now, I think that owner is definitely off base for this being the response, but this doesn't surprise me because this is how New Atlanta is. So I'm happy that Keith Lee is shining a light on what this ends up doing to regular people who just want to get good food. But I'm bothered because Keith Lee inadvertently is participating in the actual source of the problem he's complaining about. And in some ways it's making it worse because as I said, Keith Lee is a food critic, not a culture critic. But the issue isn't the food, it's the culture. A lot of people are complaining about a reality in Atlanta restaurants that they've helped build and turning around and blaming it on the restaurants when they are just giving them exactly what they've been asking for, even if they don't realize that that's what they've been asking for. In one of the videos, Keith Lee visits Old Lady Gang, which is a restaurant owned by Candy Burris, who is a reality TV star and former R&B superstar. And when he gets there, he finds out that there's a 90 minute wait and he decides, breaking his protocol, mind you, that he's just gonna go and say what's up to the people. And when he gets in there, he gets frustrated because he starts to get treated like a celebrity, which is not what he wants. And he's made that very clear, but that's kind of the weird nature of being even a micro influencer is that when you pop up, no matter what you say or do, your influence ends up speaking for you. Long story short, me and my family tried to go to Old Lady Gang and that situation just wasn't for me. And I want to be very clear. Usually when celebrities come in, they want to be treated like that. I'm not a celebrity, I'm a normal person. So I get the employee was just trying to do her job. I'm just not the target audience for that kind of treatment. So we went to another place. Keith Lee reviewing a restaurant can have a life-changing effect on that restaurant. And that type of power ends up creating a mind of its own. Even now you see it's not having the result he might've intended. He just made a video trying to clarify things, but it's too late because people are using Keith Lee as an excuse to air their grievances about a lot of restaurants and saying things that Keith Lee didn't even say. The Real Milk and Honey is one of the restaurants that me and my family went to. The Real Milk and Honey and Milk and Honey are two Two different restaurants. The real milk and honey is a restaurant we went to. Milk and honey is a restaurant we did not attend. I already was very clear and transparent asking y'all not to leave hate anywhere. But specifically, don't leave hate to the milk and honey. They didn't do anything. Update, I just received a notice from the owner of the milk and honey. The place that we did not go to, them and their employees been receiving death threats. I'm absolutely a hundred percent not with that. That's so corny and so lame, regardless of my opinion on any restaurant, even if it's the real milk and honey. We don't do that over here at all. If you what Keith Lee doesn't quite get that I want to make sure is really clear is that I don't think he has issue with Atlanta restaurants. What Keith Lee has issues with is Atlanta niggas. Y'all, we created this monster with our black capitalism and our bougie Instagram culture and the restaurants are just a byproduct of that monster. For all of you complaining about the restaurants, ask yourself, what is it you'd actually want them to do? Do you think they can sit, feed, and provide good customer service to 500 people all coming at the same time? Cause all y'all wanna go to the hot new eatery? Do you want to go to the old lady gang to have a sit down experience? Then you might need to wait that 90 minutes or go somewhere else. Do y'all want Atlanta to be bougie black excellence and create exclusive spaces and experiences that are very exclusionary to other types of black people so you can show off your black excellence? Or do you want to be in a chill city that's too busy to hate, that maintains its values and unique culture? You can't do both, at least not at the same time. I've had Old Lady Gang before. It's pretty good via takeout in the middle of the week. And it's good, but not much better than Ray's Southern food off Jonesboro Road. I've been to the breakfast club in Houston, some of the best breakfasts I've ever had, and I stood in line for 90 minutes and didn't complain because I knew what I was getting into. I have never went to the real milk and honey, but I have eaten at the infinitely less crowded and still amazing breakfast boys, which is literally two minutes up the street. That's the set of choices, y'all. If y'all want Atlanta to feel like the black LA, then you gotta be prepared for the type of exclusionary elitist shit that comes with being LA. Or maybe divest from it altogether. Just a suggestion if Keith Lee could influence y'all to do anything, it might be to reject wanting so badly to be celebrities. I keep seeing people say that Lee should come back to Atlanta and let the city do right by him, but y'all are missing the point still. He doesn't want the red carpet treatment. He wants good food without the pretense and to help people. And I feel bad because 
if his experience is anything like mine, he's at a point where it's harder for him to do that in a culture that is obsessed with celebrity status and where people will send death threats just because you said you weren't happy with something. And that sucks. But y'all don't have to listen to me. Eat wherever you want. But at least stop throwing shade at the black businesses for giving y'all exactly what you asked for. Keith Lee didn't expose any Atlanta restaurants. He exposed Atlanta culture. I'm FD Signifier, and this has been Light Work.